Well, former Prime Minister Brian Mulroney was given a rare invitation as a foreigner to appear before the U.S. Senate Foreign Relations Committee today, and he joins us from Washington. Uh, Mr. Mulroney, you warned senators that when fear and anger fuel a trade debate, protectionist impulses become, as you described it, a, a convenient handmaiden. How can Canadian negotiator, negotiators overcome like both of those emotions, which are clearly driving the debate with Trump now, uh, in order to avoid what you quoted Ronald Reagan as saying, protectionism becoming destructionalism. How do you do that? Well, uh, President Reagan was, of course, right. Any degree of protectionism destroys jobs and eventually destroys the trading capacity of great nations. So what we have to do is keep, what, keep on what the government has been doing. They've got good negotiators. They've got a good negotiating team. They've got a lot of support from the opposition parties in many ways which is extremely helpful. Uh, and, you know, there's no conservative way to negotiate uh, NAFTA. And there's no liberal way to do it. There's only a Canadian way. And it's the way that we used in, with the first Canada-US free trade agreement and then NAFTA many years ago. And it requires patience and uh, thoughtfulness and a generous approach. You've got to listen to what the other two are saying, see if you can accommodate them honorably. And if you can, uh, give some ground, put some water in your wine, and then move on and uh, to, to uh, something else. I, I think that's what the government is doing in this circumstance, and, and I certainly think they're doing the right thing. The big challenge, though, sir, is that there's a missing connection between the prime minister and the president. In 1988, as you know, you could pick up the phone and sell Ronald Reagan on changes in negotiations. That, that just doesn't seem to be the case here. What's your read on Trump? Because he blows hot and cold. How do we deal with that? Well, he does with vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, NAFTA and, and other things as well. But I think that the relationship that... Um, Prime Minister Trudeau has developed uh, with President Trump is a very good one, uh, one of the best of industrialized leaders in the world. And how do I know that? Well, because President Trump told me that that was the case after some meetings with, uh, with uh, Prime Minister Trudeau. So that is um, our ace in the hole in many ways. Um, he, the Prime Minister can be counted upon to go down there in the crunch and uh, say, you know, hey, uh, Mr. President, Donald, uh, this is not going to fly this way. And if you want to maintain this great trading relationship, we're all going to have to change a bit. So you're not despairing at all at what you're hearing. You think that Justin Trudeau really could, uh, you know, speed dial Donald Trump and have him bend a little bit on these negotiations as the way you did with Ronald Reagan? I think so. And uh, moreover, um, if you listen carefully to what the senators told me today, they made a statement. One of them made a, a senior senator made a statement saying, uh, I know of no one, words to this effect, I know of no one on this side of the street, speaking of the Senate and the House, uh, who is interested in seeing the collapse of NAFTA. Now, nobody can tear up NAFTA or get rid of it without the approval of Congress. So this is not a small statement that was made today. This is extremely important for Canada. So we got to keep a smile on our faces and our heads down and work hard, and uh, we'll get there. We, we keep talking uh, in these negotiations about red lines that Canada can't cross and poison pills and that sort of thing. Are there red lines that Canada can't cross without compromising the essence of NAFTA. I know you worked hard to get Chapter 11, that dispute settlement mechanism, put forward. Is that a, a red line that Canada really shouldn't be crossing without a great deal of trepidation? And, and Chapter 19. Look, uh, since right. that time, there, there's been Canada's uh, free trade agreement with uh, the European Union, uh, with the TPP, uh, and they can look at, and the WTO, you can look at uh, what has been done in those and see if you can't find a first cousin or so uh, of that that meets the approval of the other two partners. Um, I don't like uh, the idea of red lines in, in negotiations. I never did. Uh, because you can generally, if people are reasonable and they see their, their advantage, they'll come to 
their senses and there will be an arrangement. Look, uh, Don, a free trade agreement is of no value unless all the parties benefit. And in this case, the benefits are clear. Uh, it's, a, it's a challenge, however, in some cases, to make that case uh, to some of the Americans involved. I'm curious if uh, I've heard some criticism uh, from people up here that Canada's business community hasn't adequately showcased the benefits of NAFTA to their American counterparts. Could more be done, should more be done, to showcase those benefits to, uh, on both sides of the border? Look, the government has done a very good job. I'm in the embassy down here. They've done a great job in uh, getting the word out to, to governors, to uh, uh, members of the House, to uh, senators, to you name it. They've done a very good job in doing that across the country. Uh, and one of the uh, component groups that is helping a great deal is the Canadian business community. I know of literally hundreds of cases where leading Canadians, uh, business uh, people, have been down here uh, pounding on doors and making the case. And we heard about it today. Like, for example, Senator Young from Indiana made it very clear. He said, look, there are 190,000 jobs in my state that depend directly on trade with Canada. Anybody who's going to tell me to cancel this has got a real fight ahead of them. So I think that the, the, that good work is done by people uh, from Canada on a regular basis. And I must say that I'm very impressed with the results. Okay. I got to tell you, it's the weirdest darn thing. If you do a news search on Brian Mulroney lately, you know what comes up? The big news topic with your name is that you're the father of Caroline Mulroney, a potential <laughs> candidate for the Ontario <laughs> PC leader. I couldn't find, believe that. Um, and your daughter-in-law has posted a yes or no chart on Instagram saying, you know, to her followers, which should Caroline do? Should she run? What's your advice? Do you talk, <laughs> talking to your daughter saying, now is your time? Or are you saying, hold off, you got a lot of time left before you have to commit? Well, Caroline's a wonderful uh, young woman, and uh, she makes up her own mind on things. Uh, she talks to me regularly, as she does to her, her mom and her siblings. Uh, but she makes up her own, and her own family, and she makes up her own mind. And uh, your guest tonight, is as good as mine as to what that's going to be. But I'll tell you this, if she were to run and she, and she uh, were to be successful, uh, she would be an outstanding uh, representative for Ontario. I, I, I've met her and I've actually talked to you about her. I said, who's the political animal in your family? And you always, years ago, you pointed straight to Caroline and said, She's the one that might have yeah. the royal jelly of any of my kids do. Um, I wonder quickly, last question on this, if you're concerned that if she runs for this leadership, she's in a bit of a party that's got an awful lot of image issues. Is this a, is this a good time to want to be leader of that party? Well, who knows? You'll have to wait and see until if she decides <laughs> to run and what she's able to do if she does. Uh, but, you know, these things happen to all political parties and they're fairly transient. And a new leader will turn the page and step out into the sunlight uh, with new policies and a new approach and a new attitude uh, and bring a new dimension to Ontario politics. And if that were the case, I think all of this stuff will vanish pretty quickly. Look at that, sunny ways coming to Ontario. All right, uh, Brian Mulroney, always a pleasure <laughs> having you on. Thank you. <laughs> Thank all you, right. Don. <laughs>